Good morning. My name is Martin Dichkens. I'm the president of the European Stroke Organization, and I'm on my way to the eighth ESO conference in Lyon, France. I'm here with uh, Dr. Elisif uh, Mathiesen, urologist at the University Hospital of North Norway, University of Tromso, and chief investigator of the TWIST trial to talk about the trial she and her co-investigators conducted. Hello, Elisif. Hello, and thank you for uh, letting me have this opportunity to discuss the results of the TWIST trial. Yeah, so we're so glad to have you here today. So you did a trial in patients with wake-up stroke. Can you tell me what you were trying to do? Well, because the uh, exact time of wake-up of stroke onset in wake-up stroke patients is unknown, uh, patients with wake-up stroke have traditionally not been eligible for treatment with thrombolysis. So we aim to uh, design a trial that would uh, uh, that could show whether patients uh, with wake up stroke would benefit from treatment with tenecteplase. And we used CTS screening method. And this is universally available in all stroke centers and uh, would therefore hopefully be applicable for most wake up stroke patients. Yeah, that, that's very interesting and obviously a very important point. Um, now, given previous trials that have been conducted in the field of wake-up stroke, how did the study population in TWIST compare to previous trials in patients with wake-up stroke? There are some differences. Uh, the um, sex and age distribution in TWIST is similar to that of the EXPAND trial, uh, one of the trials that have shown benefit of treatment with all the place uh, in, uh, in patients with salvageable tissue uh, on the perfusion energy. Uh, but the, um, it's, uh, the age distribution is different from that of the wake-up stroke trial. It, we are, the power patients are on average eight years older, and uh, um, the sex distribution is also a little lower with percent of men in, in our trial compared to uh, wake-up, which had a higher proportion of men. The um, NIHSS scores are similar to that of wake up, uh, but they were higher in the extend trial. Uh, we had a mean median uh, NIHSS of six, both in, in twist and in wake up, but it was 12 and 10 in the extend. So there are some differences. Um, the median time from wake up to randomization is, uh, is uh, similar to that of the wake up trial. Can you just remind me of sample sizes in wake up in the recent trial? Um, the sample size in the wake up trial was uh, 503 patients. And uh, extend, I don't remember exactly, it's 260, I think, approximately. Um, and so, with uh, the uh, 578 patients in TWIST, this is actually the largest trial, on, uh, randomized trial on thrombolysis in wake-up stroke patients. Yeah, that, that is very remarkable indeed. I noted that you used non-contrast CT for screening patients. How straightforward was this in the trial and who rated the scans? Yes, it was done by, uh, as a part of the regular routine, uh, done by the uh, radiologist or, and or uh, neurologist, neurologist that were on call. And with the methods that they use for us, uh, for evaluating uh, non-contrast CT in patients with known symptom onset. So um, it was um, uh, rated by the local uh, on-call radiologist and neurologist. And I mean, I, I do understand the rationale for choosing CT uh, rather than MRI. Um, did you see any downside of choosing CT versus MRI? Would you have rather liked to have MRI as an inclusion criterion? Well, of course, uh, MRI has, uh, has some advantages that you can exclude perhaps patients who are less likely to benefit from treatment, of course, and that's, uh, that's the same with the perfusion imaging. On the other hand, um, the previous trial showed that uh, up to 40% of those who, um, who have known symptom onset within less than, than 4.5 hours, they lack uh, the DVI flare mismatch criteria seen on, seen on MRIs. So that indicates that we, 
that patients who could benefit from treatment would be excluded if we used uh, these criteria. Yeah, I, I see that point. Um, I also noted that the proportion of individuals receiving endovascular treatment, and you made that point very clear, was higher in the control group. Do you believe that this could have affected the results of your trial? Uh, yes, it could. Uh, it's possible. Uh, and we hadn't really expected that it should be so unbalanced as it turned out to be. Uh, so the, um, we did a, a plant, a pre plant subgroup analysis on patients treated uh, with thrombectomy and those who were not treated with thrombectomy. And uh, this analysis showed that in the non thrombectomy group, the effect estimates increased somewhat, while there was no positive effect at all in the thrombectomy group. Actually, the, um, uh, the odds were more in favor of not treating with tenecti. Although, of course, these were yeah. very- yeah, uh, But of course, it's, it's very low numbers. Very low not, numbers. Yeah, not designed to look at this, but uh, to look at the subgroup, it cannot be, uh, cannot, <laughs> uh, interpret it causally, of course. Uh, with, yes, um, and did by any chance, because of course we noted that in your trial, the point estimate uh, was in favor of being treated with tenecteplase, even though it, as you pointed out, did not reach statistical significance, neither in the shift analysis nor in the secondary uh, analysis for ranking O and uh, uh, zero and uh, one. But in the subgroup, in the sensitivity analysis that you didn't present, but on which you commented, uh, where you excluded individuals receiving mechanical thrombectomy, did the point estimate raise and did yes. this result get significant or not? No, no, it's not significant. It's not, but it, it raised. Um, and another, uh, another problem is that we had more crossovers in, the, in the, those who were treated with uh, thrombectomy. And with crossovers, I mean, P in patients in the control group who received thrombolysis or patients in the tenecteplase group who did not receive, thrombo who received thrombolysis. And when we excluded these patients, all this, those crossovers, then we had a borderline uh, significant finding in, uh, with the uh, dichotomized outcome, the, the uh, zero to one uh, on MRS on, uh, on the modified ranking scale. Okay, that leads me to my last question, actually, Elisif, and this is, if you would have to do this trial again, what is it that you would do differently except for increasing sample size? Well, the sample size is, of course, the most important thing I would have changed, but uh, I think perhaps uh, we should not have in allowed uh, thrombectomy to, uh, to uh, be included in our trial. Um, that is uh, perhaps the main point. I still think that we should uh, use, it was worthwhile to select patients by use of non-contrast CT. Yeah. I think that, and also use tenecteplase. I think, still think that this has some advantages compared to. So. Yeah, no, that, that all makes entirely sense. People may want to know more about this. So where are we going to be able to read about your trial in detail? Yes, we, um, we uh, would have liked to, <laughs> to uh, uh, present the results in a, as a published paper today, but, um, uh, but uh, it has been submitted and we hope that it will be accepted for publication in the high rank journal soon. Well, congratulations. So we certainly hope to see this happening. Um, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Elif. I hope you have a good meeting here and uh, good luck with your future research. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.